In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let me read for you from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. Jesus got into a boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified? Are you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this? whom even the winds and the sea obey. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sisters and brothers, the Gospel speaks to us today about a miracle. And we know this miracle as the miracle of calming the sea. But my dear friends, is this the miracle of the calming of the sea? Indeed, it is not. What Jesus did was, he calmed the distressed disciples. When Jesus entered the boat and boat was moving into the center of the sea, there was a violent storm, we are told. And the disciples were terrified. So terrified. They became so helpless. They became so frightened. They began to cry aloud. 
Don't you care for us? We are perishing. And what did Jesus do? Did Jesus calm the sea? No. Before calming the sea, Jesus calmed the disciples. Why did you doubt? Don't you believe? And the minds of the disciples were calm. And then Jesus turned to the violent storm and the raging waves and calmed the storm and the waves. Hallelujah. 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 This is a message to every one of us. All the time we imagine there are problems in the world. Problems outside of us. Problems in the family. Problems in the parish. Problems in the workplace. And we want someone to solve the problem. But then, where is the problem? When there's a problem in the family, the husband and wife fighting all the time, you go and consult someone. Someone you imagine could solve the problem. That someone would tell you, ah, the problem is because your house is situated in a wrong place. The house is turning to the east. And a house should not be built turning to the east. It has to be rebuilt turning to the west. You imagine the problem is with the building. There's a problem in the parish. A fight all the time in the parish council. You agree on nothing. And you're disturbed. And someone told you, ah, all the problems in the parish because the road is not well situated. The road has to be redirected. And that's why there's a problem. We blame the world around us. But where is the problem? The problem is not in the land, not in the road, not in the building. The problem is with me. It's here the problem. It's in the heart of you and me. And what Jesus wants to do is to enter into our heart and solve the problem of the heart. The story is told, I'm sure you have heard this story, of a teacher who wanted to give a lesson to a little boy. And so the teacher took a picture of the world map and tore it to pieces and kept it on the table, asked the boy to keep the picture in order. It's a world map. The pieces are, the map is torn to pieces. Pieces are kept on the table and rearrange the pieces of the world map and make it the right way. And the boy tried. Tried again and again. The world map could not be correctly placed. And then the teacher did something very special. He took those pieces and turned it upside down. On the other side of the picture, there was the photo of a man, the face of a man. And asked the boy to rearrange the 
pictures in such a way that the face of man would appear. And the boy could easily rearrange that picture. And the photo of the man came clear from all those torn pieces. And the teacher told the boy, the problem is not with the world. The problem is with man, with you and me. When the human person is well ordered, the world around will also be well ordered. The problem is with you and with me. And that's why when Jesus came to start the mission of preaching after having fasted 40 days and 40 nights, how did Jesus start his preaching? At that time, there was terrible disorder in the world. In the world, in Judea, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Palestine. The land was occupied by the Romans. And the Romans were very cruel administrators, torturing the Jewish people. And even... Among the Jewish people, there was a problem. A lot of terrorist groups fighting with each other. The religious situation was bad. The Pharisees and the leaders of the people were corrupt. Everywhere, Jesus saw problem. With the whole world around, political problem, economic problem, financial problems and Jesus came to save and how did Jesus start the act of salvation Jesus started the act of salvation by saying Mark chapter 1 Mark chapter 1 verse 15 repent repent for the kingdom of God is at hand the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled for the kingdom of God to be reestablished. And for this, the one thing you need to do is to repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus did not say, take up arms and fight against the Romans. Chase them out of the Jewish land. There will be kingdom of God here. He did not say that terrorist groups were to be eliminated. No. He did not say the religious groups, the different groups fighting with each other were to be condemned. He did not condemn anyone. He did not call for violence and arms. Jesus called for repentance. And what is repentance? Repentance is change of the heart. When human heart is changed, there is a time when the kingdom of God will be established in our midst, around us, in the world. What is the kingdom of God? Romans 14, 17. The kingdom of God is is the righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. That righteousness, that peace, that joy of the Holy Spirit will come into your family, into your parish, into your neighborhood. You know when? When I repent. You repent, Jesus said. When my heart is changed, when my heart is turned to God, there will be the advent of the kingdom of God in our midst. And you and I, this is a message Jesus said 2,000 years ago. And you and I, to this message, we need to turn our ear, our heart to repent. Repentance, turning my heart to God. 
and offering to Jesus everything wrong, everything sad, everything bitter in my life, in my family, in my neighborhood. And the Lord will take charge. The Lord will take charge and the kingdom of God, the Lord will usher in. But I, I need to be the first person to turn to my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all of us raise our hands up and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, when we open the Gospels and read, we will understand there are four basic negativities, negativities in human life. Negativities that Jesus wants to take over and Jesus wants to change. First, the negativity in our hearts is self-condemned. I condemn myself. I despise myself. I hate myself. I slip into despair and guilt. Self-condemned. Haven't you heard people saying, what good am I for? I'm of no good any anymore for anyone. I hate myself. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? And I should have never done it. I, I despise myself for having done it. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, this negativity of self-condemned started in paradise with the first man, Adam. Adam committed a sin, turned against God, and God came calling. Something very beautiful. Even after Adam committed a sin, God came calling. In the Bible, to call someone by name is to approach him with respect and love. Adam, where are you? God came calling. What did Adam say? Oh God, I'm hiding. I'm hiding behind the tree. I'm naked. In the Bible, nakedness is not mere physical lack of clothes. No. Nakedness is a negativity. I'm naked. It is shame. I'm ashamed of myself. I hate myself. I despise myself. I cannot come into your presence. I cannot look at your face. I'm keeping far away from you. I'm hiding behind the tree because I'm ashamed of myself. This negativity of self-contempt. This could be there in the heart of every one of us. Everyone who commits a sin will end up this negativity of self-contempt. I was talking to a man. He was an alcoholic. And I tried to convince him to come out of his alcoholism, to surrender his life to God. I spoke to him very long. He did not answer. But after some time, he began to shed tears. And he told me, Father, is it because I do not want to change that I'm still an alcoholic? Or oh, no, I want to change, but I cannot change. I despise myself. I hate myself. I'm desperate. Self-contempt. A person who is in self-contempt will never come out of it. That is a terrible slavery of self-contempt was needed for Jesus to take him out of it. And that's what Jesus wants today to do to every one of us, to take us out of the self-contempt. All that we need to do is to turn to him, turn away from our sin, turn to the Lord, surrender, surrender every sin, every sinful habit and the Lord will take us out of that despair and self-condemned. The second negativity in the heart of every one of us is 
despair and depression. Despair and depression because I feel defeated. I'm not good enough. I feel defeated. No one cares for me. No one wants me. I love, but no one loves me. I'm of no good to anyone. And that leads us to a sense of despair and depression. All of us, we are created to love and to be loved. That's why we were born out of parents, a man and a woman who love each other. Out of their love, we were born because God wanted us to be born as a celebration in the hands of two people who love, who care. And that's how we were born. And then God gave us brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, teachers, priests, sisters, friends, in order that we may be loved. It's only in love, in the atmosphere of love, that we will thrive. That's the only way we will be able to grow up. And God knows this. That's the way we are created. And yet, you and I, we could feel defeated. I loved, but no one loved me. I helped people, but in the moments of my need, they turned away from me. I feel defeated. I trusted people, but the people I trusted, they, they deceived me. I feel defeated. Everyone is failing me. And this hurt, this hurt that leads us to despair and depression, this is a very negative power in the heart of every one of us. These memories tend to haunt us all the time. The memories of the past. Even in marriage, haven't you heard people saying, I know what you did to me 20 years ago. A husband telling a wife. A wife telling a husband, I know what you said of me 25 years ago. The jubilee of hurts, of hurts. Over the years, these hurts get accumulated. And these hurts continue to haunt us all the time. But then, there's something terrible here. Because the hurts are not reasonable. There's something unreasonable about every hurt. You cannot argue with someone, how can you be hurt? A husband could ask a wife, how can you be hurt? I love you so much. Yes, he loves. But the wife feels he does not. You cannot argue and establish that you love the wife. The story is told of a couple. The wife would always complain to the husband, you go to the office in the morning, you come back in the evening, every day you go out and come back, but I'm all the time stuck to the kitchen. The two children, I have to cook for them, I have to do the cleaning, the washing, and teaching the children. I'm always stuck, confined to the house. Do you ever take me out one day? Did you ever take me out for a film? On any day. And the husband told her. You must understand me. I come home very late from the office. My office is far away. And by the time I come back. It will be too late for us. To go for a film. Oh you have an explanation. You have an explanation. For everything. And I know you don't care for me. And the husband thought one day. He would take leave. Half day leave. From the office. And come home early from the office and take the wife and children for a film. So in the morning, he told his wife, today I'm taking half day leave. I'll come very early in the afternoon and you'll be ready by then 
keep the children ready we must go for a film today and she was happy but in the afternoon when the husband came the children were kept ready and the wife said i'm not coming for the film and the husband said why you wanted to go for a film i also want to go for a film let's go for a film together oh no i'm not in a mood today you take the children and go and i will come some other day today i'm not in a mood so husband thought he could go for the film with the children and he went for the film for the with the children when he came back the wife was really angry and depressed very angry and depressed and the wife shouted at the husband you care only for your children right i knew this i knew this when we got the children he stopped loving me he stopped caring for me you care only for the children and the husband said no i told you in the morning be ready we will go together and she said true that is true but then when i was not ready and when i said i was not in a mood to come for the film you should have said the wife said to the husband you should have said if you my wife if you don't come for the film i'm also not going <laughs> you should have said it you never said it did he say that you wanted to go for the film with the children and you went okay wonderful i'm left out i'm defeated i'm doing all the kitchen work every day she's defeated there's something very unreasonable about hurts and yet a husband will never succeed arguing with the wife that i love you neither will the wife succeed arguing with the husband that she loves him something terribly unreasonable about being hurt the only way the only way is to turn to the lord to turn to the lord whenever any negativity enters into our personal lives into our family lives into wherever we are living the only way is the way of jesus to turn to him to turn to the lord and find our joy find our love find our peace in him in order that we may be healed the wonder jesus is waiting to do to every one of us we shall lift up to the lord our entire life today proclaiming all the days o lord given to me may i be secure in your promises never standing alone lord you're the truth you're the life you're my future jesus you made a way all my days are secure in your promise never standing alone you're the truth you're the life you're my future jesus you made a way you are the way you are the way lost and dead but your love came to find me jesus you are the way and jesus the only way jesus the only way today as we sing these few lines once again we tell him lord i was nowhere but you came lord you opened the way for me in the wilderness of god that i may see your glory i was no way you came to my rescue from the grave i've been raised when i needed a savior to save me jesus you made a way i 
was blind, but these eyes have been opened. Now I walk in the light. Every step on this road I will follow. Jesus, you made a way. Jesus, you made a way. came to find me Jesus you are the way Jesus the only way Jesus you are the way you're the light shining bright in the darkness Jesus you are the way Jesus the only way are secure in your promise, never standing alone. Lord, you're the truth, you're the life, you're my future. Jesus, you made a way. I'm alive in the love that you gave me, free to dance once again. You will lead me from glory to glory. Jesus, you made a way. You are the way. You are the way. Lost and dead, but your love came to find me. Jesus, you are the way. Jesus, the only way. Bless Him for being the only way for us. We rejoice today in every word that is eternal of nature. Jesus came to give us the power today to rejoice in all that He built for us, in all that He desired for us. Tell Him, You are the way. You are the way. Your love came to find me, Jesus. You are the way, Jesus, the only way. Up your hands and praise God together. All of you together. Let's 
will stand up and sing together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please be seated before the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters. In the book of Joshua, there we read about a command that God is giving to Joshua. Chapter 1st verse 9. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. 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 We know when we violate a commandment of the Lord, we call it a sin. We call it a sin. 
here god is commanding be strong and courageous why you have to be strong and courageous there is a reason for that the reason is that for the lord your god is with you wherever you go praise the lord hallelujah sometimes you are in a situation which frightens you which causes lot of anxiety in your life but again comes the promise what is the promise wherever you go whatever your situation will be i am with you i am the lord i am the powerful one so be strong and courageous hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. today father agustin while he was preaching to us he started with the question of the apostles who were with jesus do you not care for us that was the question of the apostles to jesus jesus was with them in the boat they had the presence of jesus even at that time they are asking to jesus do you not care for us hallelujah in our life also the same thing happens we pray we hear the word of god we still listen to the word of god and many times we have already experienced the power of the lord in our life and we believe that we are the temples of the holy spirit the holy spirit dwells within us jesus christ is within us he is with us always but at the time of problems when there is a conflict when there is a confusion when we are sick we also repeat the same question do you not care for us praise the lord praise hallelujah. hallelujah whenever we are asking that question holy spirit is reminding us about this commandment which we shall not violate in our life be strong and courageous be strong and courageous it doesn't mean that you will not have problem in your life there will be problems there will be conflicts there will be fights in our lives but at the same time our god is with us our god is with us i read somewhere whenever there is a problem you shall not cry before the lord telling that o oh lord i have this problem i have this sickness you shall not cry before the lord instead you have to tell your problem i have a god who is more powerful than you praise the lord you tell the problem that i have a god who is more powerful than you who is greater than you if you are able to tell that it shows that you are confident enough your faith has made you confident enough praise the lord hallelujah otherwise today this evening you will be praying before the lord when you are going back to the house tomorrow when you are going somewhere else you meet with a person with whom you have a problem monday you go to the office there is a problem you are thinking about the persons those who are sick in your family or when you think about your own sickness again you are frightened again you are frightened praise the lord hallelujah so holy spirit is reminding us today about this commandment can you say what is that commandment can you repeat that be strong and courageous all of you can tell be strong and courageous can you tell to the brother sister who is sitting near to you be strong and courageous what is the reason what is the reason the lord your god is always with you wherever you go wherever you go what the problem you have the lord is with you this confidence we should have lift up your right hand and say hallelujah, hallelujah. thank you jesus hallelujah. praise you jesus hallelujah. we believe we believe that you are always with us hallelujah with confidence 
with confidence we confess we profess that you are with us wherever we go hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 let's all stand up before the lord now close your eyes for a moment open your hands be aware that you are standing in front of the eucharistic lord in a very special way the lord is present in this bread that you believe do you have the faith the belief that the same lord is always with you you tell to yourself i believe that you should have that faith in you even when you go from here the lord is with you you are speaking to yourself only you can strengthen yourself those who are preaching when you hear the word of god the word of god and the preachers they help you to come to this awareness your god is not away from you he is always with you even when you are sick god is with you even when you have a problem the lord is with you speak to yourself i am sick but i am sure the lord is with me i have a problem there is a problem in my family i have a financial crisis i do not have a good job i am thinking of a new house your dreams about your future say to yourself with that dream there is your lord there is my lord our faith must lead us to that confidence as we have already reflected you are not a slave you are not a servant jesus says you are my friend a good friend he knows everything about you do you believe that yes. if you have a best friend in your life you will share everything to that friend he knows everything about you and jesus is a good friend to you he says that so you don't pray like a slave you don't pray like a servant but you are just sharing you can share with him these are the moments that you are talking with your friend as moses spoke to him as god spoke to moses as like two friends were talking each other there is no god like this he is close to you than the one who is standing near to you keep your eyes closed open your mouth open your mouth and start praising the lord for some time understand the meaning of the word that comes out of you with heart with heart you praise god for some time let the spirit of the lord comes upon you jesus let the power comes upon you the holy spirit help us to be filled with the confidence Jesus, you are become Jesus, 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 a child of God. You are that, but you are becoming with full conscience, awareness. Still louder, still louder. Open your mouth, all of you. 
heavenly father is sending the power upon us his promise is coming upon us all the anxieties worries all the distractions be removed from our heart we have a great confidence that the lord is with us always where wherever we are going whatever we are facing the lord is with us oh jesus you are a savior powerful stronger than all our problems hallelujah 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 thank you lord jesus hallelujah 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please join your hands before the Lord. Holy Spirit is reminding us another event from the book of Prophet Ezekiel. God led the prophet to a valley where he could see dried bones. And God is asking to the prophet a mortal can this bones come back to life again he says god you know god is asking the prophet to prophesy and when the prophet prophesied those dried bones were filled with sinews flesh and covered with the skin and again according to the command of the lord the prophet prophesied to the breath and the spirit the breath came upon the body lifeless bodies and there the prophet sees all the dried bones covered with flesh skin and filled with the life they stood up like an army then god says o israel you are like this you say you are without hope you don't have any hope in your life today this evening spirit of the lord is speaking to us speaking to your life you may be thinking that your life has become like those dried bones there is no hope but god says the word of god and the holy spirit could give life for your lives can strengthen you can heal you and you will become powerful again you have not lost anything with that confidence now we are praying for each other those who are standing near you can stand face to face now believe that according to the promise of the lord the lord is amongst you now he is standing there with you you can hold the hands of your brother your sister who is standing in front of you keep your eyes closed surrender all your problems especially your sickness before the lord he knows everything but you can share with him 
it's not because that he doesn't know but as a friend you are sharing with the lord you have to tell the lord also about your brother your sister who is standing near to you oh lord i surrender my brother my sister also before you you know everything about us speak to the lord praise the lord let us all kneel down before the lord now jesus is blessing each one of us this moment you can also surrender before him all your family members all those who have asked to your prayers in a very special way surrender them and all those who are helping us to coordinate this magnificat here surrender each one of them and their family before the lord so It's our God. It's our God. 